Thank you, Odin, for joining me. It's a pretty cold day in London today. When I was doing research for this, and of course, feel free to fact check me, but this is also a story that you've told a lot of times, right? Which is what kind of sparked the idea of Piggy Vest, yeah. where there was a viral tweet, I think it must have been in 2015 or something, where a woman posted, uh, um, she posted a tweet about breaking her piggy bank after saving 1,000 naira mm -hmm. every day right, for an entire year. So she had like 365,000 yeah. there, right? And then that kind of like sparked a conversation in the group chat you had with your co-founders. Yeah, and yeah. then you guys decided. Well, basically that, honestly. Um, we had like, so, you know, this was December 31, 2015. Mm -hmm. And we had like a whole thing on Twitter where it's New Year's Eve, everyone's chilling, everyone's tweeting. Mm -hmm. They don't have a shit posting, you know. <laughs> and then this woman is going viral for that tweet. And Josh sees it. And we start talking about it right there on Twitter. Mm -hmm. The tweets are even still up. Mm -hmm. And then we, we take the tweet to our group chat and we're like, you know, what would it be like to create something like this but digitally? Mm -hmm. And we started going back and forth, back and forth, and then we decided to do it. And we decided to do it because we've been very... Um, experimental mm -hmm. <laughs> we've had several projects back back to back yeah. before that and so two weeks after somto had the mvp somto is the ceo yeah, of okay. ceo cto yeah and he had the mvp built for you know what is essentially piggy rest today but mm -hmm. it's called piggy bank mm -hmm. off to the races away mm -hmm. and like sometimes do you guys have moments where you sit and think okay it's like six years later Piggy, Piggy Vest is like one of the biggest startups on the continent. And you've had tons and tons of success, but personally and also professionally as well. Do you guys think, what the F, what has happened yeah. here? I yeah, I think like, you never expect it. Mm -hmm. And I, I reference the conversation we had when we're still building in the first year. We were sat in our office then in, um, in Lagos Island and we're talking about, oh, people are signed up and using this product, you know? Mm -hmm. And honestly, we sat down and we're like, you know, if this thing gets to 1,000 users, it would be great. It would be perfect. Which I think was 1,000 users. 1,000, which is incredibly <laughs> insane. Because now we have millions, yeah, right? And it's just kind of, it goes to show, you can't really predict it ever. Mm -hmm. And honestly, every day is just kind of, you know, there's ups and downs, but it's mostly gratitude. Like, I can't yeah. believe you guys are using it. can't believe yeah. All of these people are signed up to use the platform. Mm -hmm. All of these people are signed up to work with us. Mm -hmm. You know, partners and mm -hmm. investors. Mm -hmm. And just, it's a whole different world mm -hmm. than we were mm -hmm. when we were like sitting down over Monopoly and kind of yes. talking shit about what this would be. Yeah. 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 So one of the things I find uh, really interesting as well, and I think I, and just even thinking about when, you, when you've reached a particular level of um, success and something that you didn't think could get to a particular point. I remember there's, um, Jay-Z and Kevin Hart interview that he did where he was talking, um, I think Kevin was asking him about like all of the success he's had so far. And he was talking about having conversations with his best friend, Tai Tai, where the only thing that they spent a lot of time just talking about, man, I can't believe <laughs> this shit. We, like, I can't believe. Like, we actually do. Like, we're very incredulous all the time. Yeah. About, like how much this has grown. Yeah. And also that we were the ones to build it. It's like, yeah. 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 Fascinating how this has happened. But also, I think the biggest part of this is mm -hmm. like every time you see someone walk up to you and say, I use Piggy Vest, mm -hmm. or I use Piggy Vest is pretty like normal. Mm -hmm. Like, I was, I was in a grocery store, like Ebano, and I was buying things, and a group of young girls walk up to me and they were just like, Odun. And I was like, What? And the girl was like, What? We use Piggy Vest. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, hey, it's nice to meet you. And, yeah. and then, you know, the one of them just goes like, oh, I used it to say to start my business. Oh, wow. The Instagram page. Mm -hmm. And it's the human effect mm -hmm. of that kind of thing. Right? Mm -hmm. You never get away from that. Mm -hmm. There's so many stories on the back of this product yeah. that in addition to feeling like super grateful, I'm just like motivated every day. Mm -hmm. More stories like that. Mm -hmm. Start a barber shop, build a house, mm -hmm. you know, go for your masters. Mm -hmm. We have so many of those mm -hmm. that like you can you, when you when you're like feeling down, yeah. You just, I just, like, you guys started really young. You were like super early twenties, right? When you when you when you started the idea of all of this. I mean I think yeah. The idea for us was we're building this for a generation that we belong to. Mm -hmm. And 
at the time we're starting, right? Average salary for a young person, 70K to 120. Yeah. And when you just like come out of university and you get like a decent paying job, that's it. But if you like kind of zoomed out of that a little, you look at asset managers that are 2019, mm -hmm. 2016. Um, the average entry ticket size for the lowest tier of interest was like a millionaire. Mm -hmm. None of us is earning a millionaire. Yeah. And if you like zoom out even more mm -hmm. to how much does it cost to rent a one bedroom? Mm -hmm. I lived in like Yaba at the time. My rent was 600K mm -hmm. for one bedroom. Okay. So it goes like that for like several young people just trying to make yeah. like their own way. And essentially, we were saying to young people, you need to save at least uninterrupted six months salary without doing anything else mm -hmm. to be able to get the house. Or you need to save 10 months, 12 months yeah. to be able to make an investment. That's just not fair, right? There's no democratization, there's no access. Yeah. It's not easy, it's not flexible. Yeah. And so we felt that as people, mm -hmm. and so this idea fell into our lap at a time when we were also kind of figuring things out, right? And so when we built, we built what we would want to see okay. in financial systems for us. Mm -hmm. And so it was easy. Mm -hmm. How would I want to save? You know, what kind of access would I want? How would I want to be included? Mm -hmm. And so we did that. And what's happened is we've obviously now grown with the audience that we're serving. Mm -hmm. And as a, a young person doesn't want to think every day, I actively put one thousand on our side. So we've taken that burden yeah. off of you. Mm -hmm. Give us the instruction, the system does the rest. Mm -hmm. What part of the business do you spend most time on? I mean, you are the chief operations officer. Like, what does your day-to-day -day look like? Well, um, operations is very like vast and fluid and meandering. Mm -hmm. I think. Right now, you just kind of take definition of Sumto CEO and CTO. Mm -hmm. So he's very concentrated on the product, just with marketing. Yeah. So brand and marketing and sales and all of those things fall under. And I just kind of have like overview of everything else. A lot of it is like we're a fintech company. A lot of it is financial operations, treasury, compliance, legal, all mm -hmm. of those things. We have to kind of like make sure mm -hmm. that everything is moving the right way. One of the things I'm curious about, like finding out from you as well, is like your your evaluation thesis. So a lot of your peers in the ecosystem they talk about valuation bubbles a lot, and I mean this kind of like preceded this current climate where companies like Stripe have had to like reduce their valuation because you know there's a bloodbath, right? Um, but most people think, okay, you should not invest in um, like a pre-seed round or like early rounds when there's a valuation of over five million dollars, and some people just think that. Some African founders are just like off their rockers, even like putting that kind of figure in, in pre-seed, right? Mm. But you, you invest in startups, you invest early, and sometimes like you're an advisor as well, right? So like what's your own thesis? Because I'm sure that you have a very different arrangement from like family and friends. So I I'm wearing two hats here. Mm -hmm. One is as a founder. Um, as a founder, like you, you want the best like valuation for your company, mm -hmm. right? Um, but the thing about valuation, right, now, that's after that disclaimer, uh, the thing about valuation is, like, it's a balancing game, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a sign. One, you want high valuation, mm -hmm. but two, you don't want so high valuation that you need to catch up to it. Yeah. Right? Personally, I advise against valuations that you have to build up to. Mm. Right, and that's where I probably agree with people that say pre-seed valuation should not be too high. Yeah, right. Because if you, if your pre-seed valuation is five million, there is metrics, market market acceptable metrics mm -hmm. that you need to achieve at pre-seed mm -hmm. level that you need yeah. to have at pre-seed level. Okay. And so if you raise pre-seed at five million, when it's time to raise seed, which natural seed valuations are anywhere from ten to twenty, yeah. depending on how large your company is, mm -hmm. there are also metrics. Do you think that between pre-seed and seed, you would have caught up to that multiple mm -hmm. to achieve that? Mm -hmm. Those are important questions to answer. Let's uh, segue a little bit to Feminist Coalition came together and decided we're going to support this movement, right? And I remember that a little bit after some of the work that you guys had done, and you guys had done like super incredible work, just like mobilizing um, resources for the people on the ground and making sure that you know this was getting a lot of global attention as well. Yeah. And there was like some really cruel backlash. Yeah. Um, I, mm -hmm. one of the, look, man, I'm not going to say that we enjoyed the backlash. Mm -hmm. It was very difficult. Mm -hmm. But I also think that at the end of the day, I don't think we also did it for like applause. Yeah. Um, and I can say this authoritatively yeah. because it was, me specifically mm -hmm. that told like the women yeah. that we needed to step in. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I'm I wonder if that was the right decision. Yeah. If it was right to have 
mobilize them, myself and Dami, mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think I think it was the right decision. Yeah. I think we needed help at the time. Mm -hmm. And all of us together. Like, you know, the sum of the whole is mm -hmm. stronger than just like the one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I think all of us together did a fantastic mm -hmm. job. I do say so myself. Yeah. Now, post it was the backlash coral. I think it was. Mm -hmm. I think it was difficult, but I don't think that we would take it back. Yeah. I think it was important work. Mm -hmm. I think that like at that time when people need help. Um, being in the position to be able to offer that help was very useful, mm -hmm. and like, it's something that, for for better or for worse, I do again. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was it wasn't. We think back to everything that we had to go through after. Mm -hmm. It wasn't great. Yeah. And sometimes I wish that like it didn't like turn out like that. But yeah. I also think that it was an important like. Points yeah. in the history of like young people in Nigeria, yeah. and for what for what it's worth, that's all that it needs to stand for. Yeah. Sometimes I think I feel like after everything that you guys went through, and then the backlash that that, that followed on, in my mind I'm like, yo, if I was in this position, I would be thinking, you mfers, I am risking my life and livelihood here, and this is like, mm. this is this <laughs> is the thanks I get. <laughs> so. Piggy Tech is the group company that houses products like Piggy Vest, and you've made some acquisitions as well. There's Patronize, there's Abeg, which is now called Pockets, and then there's Buy Food as well. Mm -hmm. Did I miss any other one? No, I think that's it. Okay. And I also think that you guys are brilliant with marketing, right? So I remember when Abeg sponsored um, Big Brother Nigeria, and, and I, I mean, like, Big Brother is, you know, it's like Gen Z millennial culture. Everybody watches it. Well, apart from me, and and and. But I remember that when you guys made the announcement of sponsoring Big Brother, there are people who were saying, um, "This is a very like new startup. We just started using these products. Why are they already spending all of this money on on, on Big Brother? Why are they sponsoring uh, Big Brother?" But of course, you know what the what the backend looks like. You know what the ROI was like. What did you think about people's skepticism? And was that was that like a like a worthy investment, like sponsoring the show? Did it give you guys what you expected it to, to give? So short answer, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I think that skepticism is natural. I think it's fair, and I think that when constructive, um, it can actually lead to you doing a little more introspection mm -hmm. than you would have. And for the few people that actually came directly to me, Sonto, Josh the rest of the team, mm. and some journalists to ask, we answered, mm. right? So it's like this. Pocket last year was a P2P app mm -hmm. that we knew was going to eventually evolve into a social marketplace. Mm -hmm. Now, marketplaces are two-sided, merchants and um, you know, the users. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing, right? Marketplaces have a chicken and egg problem all the time. Yeah. You need the merchants to get the users, you need the users to get mm -hmm. the merchants, and you need both of them on a large scale, yeah. right? And if there's an opportunity to solve for one, like sustainably, you'll take it. Mm -hmm. And that's what Big Brother did. We went on Big Brother to say, okay, here's this product in front of everybody. We'd like to solve for the users. Mm -hmm. Last year, we solved for the users, mm -hmm. right? There was a point when people were talking about the, you know, the ROI. And we came over like, yeah, you know what? I beg, as it was called, and got 2 million people from Big Brother last year. Wow. Yes. And then this year, when we went back, what are we solving for? Merchants. Mm -hmm. If you've like been watching it, you see that like the ads are targeted at like getting your pocket shop and things mm -hmm. like that. So that chicken and egg problem mm -hmm. solved. Enough merchants, enough users, and that translates to transactions. Mm -hmm. So it was worth it. It is worth it. But I appreciate people being concerned as mm -hmm. to what was the thinking behind it? Will you be able to get what you need from it? And all of those other interesting questions mm -hmm. because they actually keep us on our toes, right? Mm -hmm. And I definitely worry a little more because of that skepticism. Mm -hmm. Like we must hit the numbers, yeah. we must hit the projections. Yeah. We must get everything as much as we can squeeze out of this opportunity. Yeah. And so that's kind of how I look at it. I don't, I don't think people are wrong for being skeptical. Mm -hmm. The people that are insulting about it, I definitely think you're wrong. Yeah. But if you're, if you're like asking from a point of view of intellectual curiosity, yes. I appreciate it. Yeah. Because it keeps us on our toes as well. Yeah. It keeps us experimenting. I mean, you do like a lot of work, right? Uh, I mean, like I do, I, I do like maybe like half of what you do, <laughs> just in terms of like how spread out, you know, how spread out you work. And there's times where I, I feel a lot of pressure. Like I wake up sometimes and I'm, I'm lying down paralyzed in bed, just like thinking about all of the things that I have to do. 
right? But I wonder for you, do you have moments where you feel a ton of pressure where you just feel like you want to quit? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, and I think that's just because I'm a person. Yes. And so I'll feel that, mm -hmm. um, but you know, for Piggy Vest, Piggy Vest is like my baby. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not mine alone, but it's my baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, every time you feel, oh, I'm so tired, you just take a day, you mm -hmm. take a breather, mm -hmm. take a bit and mm -hmm. relax and recenter yourself. Mm -hmm. right? There's humans, mm -hmm. people at the end of this product, mm -hmm. not just like the people who use it, people on yeah. our team. Uh, and, and, and that fills you up, you find like watching shows, like taking walks, connecting with friends again. Like, is, yes. that, is that a good way to take care of yourself? Like when you feel, yes. when you have those moments? I have like very like, I'm very easy. Mm -hmm. Once I do all of those things, you yeah. know, have a chat, recenter myself, talk to my mm -hmm. mom, talk to my siblings, yeah. and kind of feel reconnected and recentered, mm -hmm. just get back to work. Like, yeah. um, we, 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 and also, like, I also believe that now is the time when you can do all of the work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just get on with it. Mm -hmm. like, there'll be a time when you can't, and mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that time, by the way, but like, <laughs> just get on with it for now. Uh, so you talk a lot about your dad, right? And I remember I, I watched one of your interviews, um, and you talked about like one of the quotes that, 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 that he, he shared with you, and I actually like really liked it as well, where you said, um, I think something had happened and, and you were feeling pretty down about it, and he told you about not taking failure personally, yeah. right? Yeah. My dad used to talk in cliches. <laughs> <laughs> he used to talk in quotes. Yeah. And so um, he used to say a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. um, when you would complain to him, he turned to you and say something that in the moment is just really annoying. You know, this mm -hmm. is not what I'm asking for. Mm -hmm. But now I see the use <laughs> of all those things. Mm -hmm. And um, when, I, when I said I wanted to like, start a company, he wasn't like, particularly happy about it because it's like, a company? That's not what you said before. And all of those things. But he also, when we had started, and it was hard going, mm -hmm. he would tell me, look, are you sure this is what you want to do? Mm -hmm. And I say, it's like, yeah, then, then you, you keep on with it. Mm -hmm. And so there was one particular thing he said one time, aim very high, mm -hmm. work very hard, care very deeply. Mm -hmm. And I held that with me, like, always. Mm -hmm. I don't even know where he got it from. Yeah. Like I'm sure he read it somewhere, and he thought it was very important for me in that moment. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've carried along with me. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't believe that there are limits to what we can achieve. Mm -hmm. We give us out of it as a person. Yeah. Um, I think that working very hard mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. Like I said, when like you have all of those days, mm -hmm. take a bit, take or do what you need to do, and mm -hmm. get back to work. As well mm -hmm. as like. It's, the world keeps on moving. Yeah. Like, things keep changing. There's mm -hmm. always so many milestones to be hit. Mm -hmm. But care very deeply. And so, like, what is at the end of what you're doing? Mm -hmm. I'm not doing work for work's sake. Yeah. I want, like, young people like myself mm -hmm. to be able to feel free. Mm -hmm. I want women to be able to feel free. I want people to kind of be living their dreams the same way I'm living mine. Mm -hmm. So those are at the core of my motivation. And mm -hmm. that's why I feel like everything that my dad said yeah. has turned out to be true. Yeah. And he was just kind of like fantastic for like mm -hmm. going to when things went like going as well. Mm -hmm. Or when I feel like, when I used to have debilitating imposter syndrome mm -hmm. and I used to go to him. Mm -hmm. And he'd tell me, look, what about seven? And I was supposed to speak at a debate competition, mm -hmm. a debate competition, and I was scared because it was a big hall. Mm -hmm. And I said, "Look, whatever you say, whether it's good or bad, those people have to sit down and listen to you. But <laughs> like, they're not going to go anywhere in the middle of your speech. No one is going to get out. The, the whole hall can't stand up and leave. Yeah. They're stuck there. Yeah. So for one, you're fine. Mm -hmm. And second thing is when I was trying to like write down my points mm -hmm. and learn them, he's like, "Do you believe in all of these things?" I said, yes, and you don't really need to kind of like, you know, like cram your own words. Mm -hmm. You just need to know you believe in them yeah. and say them. Mm -hmm. And for, since then, I, I've known that every time I wanted to give a speech, all I needed to do was align the points I wanted to make in my head and mm -hmm. talk from the heart. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, he's very, he's been very helpful. Yeah. Um, like in just kind of helping me be mm -hmm. and come into the person that I am. Mm -hmm. right? Like, it's like... There's a quote that he also used to say, be you, the world will adjust. Mm -hmm. And you know what? He was right. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have to really modify yourself. So he had a bunch of things he said to us when we had like, I don't know what he even said to my sister yeah. or my brother yeah. or my little sister. Everybody mm -hmm. he was just like kind of really cool with helping you align mm -hmm. with the situation mm -hmm. and cutting through the meat of it all to what was really bothering mm -hmm. you. Until today, mm -hmm. it is what it is. Like, yeah. I am who I am. Yeah. You're either okay with that or you're not. Mm -hmm. But eventually, we'll move past whatever is going on mm -hmm. and life continues. Mm -hmm. 
And that's, that's been very helpful. Yeah. To just kind of navigating through life. Yeah. And, and how do you deal with, with grief and his loss? Like, I'm sure he will be very proud of you and everything that you've accomplished. Are I mean, you, I hope so. <laughs> like, are you, do you find that you are doing things in the way you show up in the world and in the way you work to kind of like sustain his legacy, all of these lessons he's, 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 he's shared with you and, and given you your life? Like, do you find that you still carry that with you? I definitely try. Okay. Um, he was my hero, so mm -hmm. I don't think that I can... I think it's like gigantic shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. But I think I, I try in that I, I always wanted him to be proud of me and I still want him to be proud of me. Yeah. And so every everything I carry inside of me is, you know, would he like would he accept this? Would he agree with this? Mm -hmm. My dad was very like interested in individualism, like yeah. living as yourself, showing mm -hmm. up as your full self, being your best self. Mm -hmm. So I as much as possible, try to stay authentic. Mm -hmm. He was very family oriented, so I am too. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think so. I think I, I do my best mm -hmm. and hope, you know, like it's enough. Yeah. Uh, but so far, so good. And how do I deal with grief? Honestly, I think very poorly. Mm -hmm. He he died in 2019. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I've gotten over it. And I don't mm -hmm. think I will. Yeah. Right? I think you, you know, I, I read this quote from my friend Carol where she says, like, you don't really, you know, your grief, right? You just kind of grow, mm -hmm. right? You grow slightly bigger than it. It doesn't mm -hmm. shrink. Okay. And so it's like putting, I don't know, uh, I don't know how she described it, mm -hmm. but it's like putting something in a container. Yeah. The container just keeps getting bigger. Yeah. Versus the thing they you put in getting yeah. smaller. Smaller, okay. But I think it's okay. just as potent as it was the day like I was standing over him mm -hmm. but I also think that all of the things that we've achieved as a family that mm -hmm. I, I have as a person mm -hmm. I think kind of lends itself to the legacy of who he was yeah and for that we have to remain grateful and we yeah. just have to keep on moving yeah I, I mean I think it's a beautiful thing and I think that it's it's also something that's apparent in like the way you live your life and um like I, I spend a lot of time on your Instagram stories, right? Because first of all, I think like, <laughs> that so you're, you're, you're hilarious. <laughs> I'm like, you're always onto <laughs> some shit in your Instagram stories. <laughs> but, 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 but more than that, it's also a lot of family, right? Like, I mean, I know like what all your siblings look like. Um, I'm a yeah, mom. Yeah, I'm exactly. Yeah, I, know, I know what, what everybody looks like. <laughs> and, and I think that I, I, I see that and I can see, yeah. you know, how that is your father's legacy, like sustaining yeah, through being you. sustained through all of you. Means a lot. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, let's do some quick fire. I have like two questions for you. <laughs> okay, what's your most valuable possession under hundred dollars? My dad's university project. Okay. Don't ask him what you remember. <laughs> I just have it. And I know that he printed it for less than hundred dollars. <laughs> and I always had it with me, so it with me. Do you still have yours though? No. What did you do with it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have mine and I keep moving from house to house with it. And every time I look at it, I'm like, Any project. Bro, yeah. I need find my own. Yeah. I don't, I, sometimes I'm like, this is just drunk at this point. Should I throw it out? I don't know. I'm pretty sure I left mine. Oh, God. I think I left it in Covenant. <laughs> oh. Okay. I have my certificate. Just <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Okay. And then the second one. If Pete Davidson and Lewis Hamilton were stuck in a burning building and you or Dunn were the firefighter outside the building and they said to you, you can only save one of them, who will it be? I'd go to lunch. <laughs> You're a firefighter, you owe the public this service. I can't save one of them and leave the other because one of them is dead. But I mean, it's like you have Look, to save one of them. Look, they call love, Like they either both die or none of them <laughs> die. So is it that, do we have enough water to save both of them? No. I think Kanye would choose Lewis Hamilton. Yes, Kanye would absolutely <laughs> choose Lewis Hamilton. But like on, on a more serious note, neither, like, neither, I, neither. I, I, think I like the two of them for like very different reasons, but just yeah. as much, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, fair enough. I guess, you know, if, if that ever happened, mm -hmm. then R.I.P. Peter and Lewis. I'm sorry, <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> you know what? It's Lewis I'll say. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, 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 I can live with that. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought about it now. Sorry yeah. Pit. Yeah. We, we, I need Lewis. I don't know why you need Lewis, but okay. <laughs> but Audrey, thank you so much for doing this. I've had a ball of a day and... Uh, yeah. So yeah. great. Yeah.